And welcome back. Mark Taylor Canfield, you have a report on the Seattle election. Lay it on me. Yeah, I've been writing about this at Daily Coast, Tom. Uh, in Seattle and Martin Luther King County, we have these self-described progressives who faced off with more conservative business, business interests. Uh -huh. And that was uh, elections throughout the city and the county. Um, Senator Bernie Sanders endorsed Lorena Gonzalez for mayor and Teresa Mosqueda for city council. He also endorsed two candidates for port commissioner. And both of those races are too close to call. Mesqueda looks like she's going to win her re-election, but our next mayor is going to be Bruce Harrell, uh, former president of the city council who was bankrolled by major corporate interests. Mm -hmm. He's not really a reformer when it comes to policing, so I doubt the Black Lives Matter demonstrators are going to be very happy about that. Okay. Um, we have a city attorney, Ann Davison, who it looks like she's going to win. She was a Democrat until just last year when she switched to the Republican Party. Actually, it was the last year of Trump's um, office. And she is beating her opponent, opponent Nicole Thomas Kennedy, right now. Uh, and it's looking like we will have Ann Davison as our city attorney. Now, that's really caused a lot of concern among civil rights activists because she's definitely not about police reform. Um, and I think between her and Mayor Harrell, who is, a, who is a good guy, Tom, I've known him for years, but he's just much more of a centrist than I think the, the, the politics of the city. Uh, the city council will remain pretty progressive, but we're going to have a mayor once again, and this is usual for Seattle, who will be, who will be representing large corporations and business interests, real estate developers in the city, we have this mass problem with homelessness. Um, Bruce is okay with sweeping homeless encampments, destroying people's property and arresting them for being you know, poor, basically. So I would expect more demonstrations on that issue and on police reform in Seattle because it looks like the, the goals of the city council are really going to be hampered by a city attorney who's definitely a law and order person. And then you also have uh, a mayor who is not going to be very sympathetic to a lot of the demonstrators like we had last year with the massive tear gas that was used during those demonstrations and things. So, yeah. it, you know, Seattle has got this battle between the progressives who tend to be in control, in, in, at least on the city council, and these corporate interests, you know, because we are the headquarters for Expedia and Amazon and Starbucks and so many other Microsoft, so many corporations. And here's the problem, Tom, and it has to do with democracy. And as executive director for Democracy Watch News, this is my major concern, According to election officials, only 50% of eligible, eligible voters in Seattle even participated in the election. Only 43% of eligible voters in Martin Luther King Jr. County. So in these off-year elections, when you don't have a president, you know, presidential candidate, there really is a problem, even a very progressive, activist city like Seattle and getting people out to the polls. I think that's one reason why these corporate interests can bankroll candidates, run smear campaigns against the, the opponent in the city attorney race and scare people into voting for a law and order candidate like Ann Davison. It's really too bad that we have that problem with democracy in the United States. We need much, much more participation in these local elections. Yeah. Here in Portland, we've got a problem with uh, uh, massive homelessness problems, things like that. That is causing people to turn away from progressive candidates, Mark. Is that the same thing happening in Seattle? I think it had to do with the city count, city attorney's race. It had to do with the fact with that she had made some very, very vociferous anti-police statements in, on her Twitter account, and they used that to smear her as some kind of extremist radical. Yeah, I get it. Mark Taylor Canfield. Mark, thanks a lot. Good talking to you. We'll be back. It's 20 minutes past the hour. Share the Tom Hartman program with your friends. We're available on Sirius XM, Free Speech TV, Pacifica, commercial stations nationwide, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, on the Tom Hartman app, and you can even tell your smart speaker to listen to the Tom Hartman program. Hey, we've got a new video up over at TomHartman.com about Big Malian. You heard about this? This is, now I'm not talking about the George Bernard Shaw play that got made into the movie, My Fair Lady and all that kind of stuff. No, this is a PR firm in France. And, you know, when you hear from Americans that, oh, we could never put Donald Trump in jail because only third world countries do that. Uh, France is not only not a third world country, they're our oldest ally. And they just convicted their former president for the second time of fraud and corruption around 
his, the way he was running his campaigns, Nicolas Sarkozy. They just convicted him a second time. Now, he's appealing both of them. He's, you know, walking around with an ankle bracelet. But, uh, you know, I've got all the details on this video over at TomHartman.com. You can check it out. But, you know, again, <laughs> next time somebody says, we can't put Trump in jail, tell them, hey, France did.